Hi, this is Big Data Guy and welcome to your second Spark tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be learning about how to install Spark. Now, there are two ways to install Spark uh, using Python. One is that we can just install a package called PySpark. And then the second approach is to install Spark natively. The difference between those two approach is that if we are using package, which is the PySpark package from the Python package manager, then we can only run it in Python native environment and we will not be able to submit Spark job. So if you are looking to go and visualize how Spark executes uh, various workflows and how it creates DAG, then you will not be able to do that locally because you are not able to submit a Spark job. So if you want to be able to do that, then you have to install Spark natively. And I have created a video on uh, how to install Spark natively. You can find that video on the right top side of your screen. In that video, I have covered older version of Spark, but I have run through this video today. And uh, I can assure you that if you follow those steps with the latest versions, uh, version of the Spark, which is 3.4 as of today, you should be install, uh, you should be able to install Spark natively. So with that being said, what we are going to do is we are going to be following the second approach today, which is installing the PySpark package. But I would recommend that you install Spark natively because in future we are going to be using the Spark, uh, Spark job page to visualize how it has created DAG and to see how the Spark program gets executed. Sounds good? So let's get started. So in the prerequisite for this video is that you have Python already installed on your computer and you also have Jupyter Notebook installed on your computer. So in order to install Jupyter Notebook, if you don't have it, then um, all you can do is open up a terminal or PowerShell on your machine and just write pip3 install Jup uh, Jupyter Notebook, right? And then it should be able to install it. If you already have installed it, then it would say like requirement already satisfied, like you see on my computer. Otherwise, it's going to go and install it. And once the Jupyter Notebook has been installed, go ahead and start it. In order to start it, all you need to do is just write Jupyter Notebook and it should start the notebook, right? Now, I already created a file, the notebook file on my machine. Uh, if you want to create a notebook file, all you need to do is just go to new and click on Python 3 and it will create a notebook file. And then once you create a notebook file, what you need to do is you need to install Spark. So in order to install Spark, what you can do is just write pip3 install PySpark. PySpark is a package. Now remember, this is not installing Spark natively. This is installing just a package, which is going to mimic the Spark functionality. And whatever you write, the, write with this locally, it's going to execute using this package. And then you could upload the same code to cloud like Microsoft Azure or Amazon, you know, web services or, you know, even GCP where you can pull out the Spark cluster and pretty much run the script that you've written over here and then it should run seamlessly. And there you should be able to submit jobs, right? Using, uh, using Spark submit. But, you know, locally you'll not be able to submit Spark job if you're not installed Spark natively. Anyway, so uh, let's go ahead and execute this code. Uh, if you want to install packages in Jupyter Notebook, all you need to do is uh, put explanation mark like I've done over here and then just say pip3 install PySpark and it would install PySpark package. I would highly recommend to install PySpark natively and I covered that in a uh, in a separate video as I mentioned before. So please, please, please do that after this video uh, if possible. Uh, and then this is the second approach that I've show, shown you how to install PySpark. Okay. So the first thing that we do after installing PySpark um, is to import the PySpark. And this package will allow you to write Spark jobs using you know, uh, this package, right? Okay, so now that we have Im imported PySpark, we'll create a Spark session. What is Py Spark session? It is basically a way to interact with Spark framework, Spark engine. So we covered last time that you know Spark Engine provides functionality to write Spark SQL, streaming um, jobs and machine learning jobs as well as uh, graph related jobs. So if you want to do all that things, then what you what we need to do is we need to create Spark session. You can think of it as like an entry point to all the Spark functionality, right? By the way, uh, I'm actually executing uh, this cell using shortcut. So what I'm doing is I'm using Shift Enter on my computer 
to run this piece of code quickly in Jupyter Notebook. But what you can do instead is that you should be able to use run from here and uh, in, in order to run, run the code um, in, in that particular shell in Jupyter Notebook. So yeah, if you want to use shortcut, then ju just use uh, shift enter. Okay, so in order to create a Spark session, what we need to do is we need to import Spark's, uh, Spark session first. So in order to import Spark session, what we need to do is we need to write from pyspark.sql import Spark session, right? And once we execute this code, we should be able to create Spark session. So let's create a Spark session. Usually you name Spark session just Spark, and then we'll be using this all the time. So in order to create that, we write spark session dot field there, and we'll learn about what all, all this word mean later on. App name, and then whatever your app name is. So in this case, we're gonna say test, and then get or create. Now you can also configure a lot of things in spark session, and we are going to learn about how to configure variety of thing in spark session in future. So you know, if you want to configure something, you just you know add uh, an additional uh, information over here, uh, saying that you know config some parameter, and you should be uh, you should be able to configure some sort of parameters uh, in in Spark session. Now we're going to talk about configuration later on. So let's just keep things simple. So we have created a Spark session today over here, right? And we are going to be using this Spark session to create basic uh, data frame. And in order to create a basic data frame, uh, we need some sort of data, right? So let's go and create a simple data frame to see whether or not our Spark session works. So I'm going to create a simple, like, you know, uh, stock price list in Python. So let's say we have Microsoft stock price, right? And then uh, the date is like, uh, let's say yesterday's date, so 2022, whatever the date is. So uh, yesterday was like, so, you know, 29, and then let's say today price was like $300 arbitrary, right? And then uh, again, we have the same stock price, and then, you know, let's say the price is like 250 yesterday, okay? So I'm just gonna copy paste this like couple times so that we can go back a little bit. So $200 on 27th, and then 250 on, you know, 28. So let's say you have data like this and you want to create a data frame in Spark, right? So all you need to do is just say Spark create data frame. And then um, the way that you create data frame is that it takes in two argument. One, it takes in the column name. And then the second, it takes in the data itself, right? So if you want to be, uh, uh, if you want to uh, put the column names, then you just say data is, uh, data is equal to stock price. And then uh, the second argument is schema is equal to uh, whatever the column names are. So in this case, our column name is going to be the ticker of the stock, then the date and price, right? And if you do this, it should create a data frame for you, right? So it has created a data frame. So let's go ahead and store this into a temporary data frame. And then we can say df.show. And when you df.show, it should create uh, it should show your data frame. So this is the data frame, Microsoft, and then the different stock prices, right? So in short, what we have done is that we have installed Spark package and then pretty much used the Spark functionality using uh, Spark session to collaborate with uh, Spark functionality. And then finally, we have ended up creating a data frame as you can see over here. So in this tutorial, this is what we are going to cover. Going forward, uh, in next tutorial, what we are gonna do is we're gonna start working with real data and we are gonna, you know, build a real, a real, like, you know, real world project and see how can we leverage different functionality uh, in Spark. So see you in next tutorial. Thank you.